Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. I'm David Ward and as you can see right here uh, this tutorial is going to cover creating a stylized dragon. Something in the vein that you might have seen or you not you might not have seen but something that could have been on uh, something like Star Wars Clone Wars. That uh, carved you know chiseled s s stylized shape. So anyways uh, this is just a uh, uh, a draft of, of a couple of ideas I was playing with today before I got started with this tutorial series. You can see some different ideas I was going with. So anyways, here's some sketches that uh, Wes Burke sent me about and that was some normal maps and color maps. Anyway, um, so anyways, a couple of sketches just to try to get a, a feel of how I want it to look. So anyways, we're gonna try to make one a lot like this. I'm sure it won't look exactly the same because you know it's it's a different project so anyways uh, first thing we need to do in order to be able to do this is get the latest copy of blender from the development website graphicall.org and you just go to www.graphicall.org and if you just go there it'll automatically redirect you to the builds page so we need to get the latest copy so just scroll and scroll down and we want to, I have Windows, so I go where it says all OSs, that's operating systems, I go to Windows, and then View. And it's gonna arrange them by, by the date, the newest one's at the top. So I'll go ahead and get this one here, 2.5 R2 revision 29432 for Windows 32-bit. Go ahead and click on that. And there's just some information here about what they've included in this build. And it's more for if you if you know how to read Python and things like that. Since I don't, I'm just going to go ahead and skip over it all and just go ahead and download the build. And I'm just going to open it. There's nothing to install, so I don't really need to download a exe. Don't really need to save it. If I can just open it, and then I can drag and drop it into a new folder. So as this is downloading, I'll go ahead and open up my. Um, where's it at? Blender. Go to my C drive. My program files and Blender Foundation. You can see I already have a few versions of Blender 2.5 already loaded. But uh, I like to keep the latest one here in the Blender latest folder. As you can see, it's empty right now. So I just go ahead and grab that zip 7z file, 7zip. It's uh, just like WinZip or something like that. If you're not familiar with that, you can download it. Just Google 7zip and you'll be able to get it for free. It's open source also. So, anyways, select all those, just drag and drop. Nothing to install. It was put them in your little directory there not sure how long it'll take depending on your computer speed I guess so okay and once that finishes up you're good to go so just uh, double click on blender exe and it'll open up for you I'll go ahead and rearrange it so it fits in my recording window here okay so I'll go ahead and open up that dragon that I've already made be on my G drive, Blender files, Dragon, there we are, comps, and it was 1A1, I believe, open, yeah. So here we go. Oh, one thing that happens when you download a latest build, sometimes you have to set up the user interfaces, so let me go ahead and do something real quick, just make a new scene so I can set up my user preferences, and I want to go to input, and emulate three button mouse and then save that as the default so now I open the dragon and I can hold down alt and rotate like I'm not used to doing so anyways so here's the little dragon guy I came up with this is just like I said just a comp just to get the style down because I can kinda get an idea of how to do it while being recorded so anyways um, so let's go ahead and see what we can do, see if we can do something similar to this. So we'll just go File, New, and just start with a box, because that's how I started with, uh, with that red guy there. So let's go to a Typical Modeling Techniques, just go into Tab and Edit Mode, and I want to W, Subdivide, top one, and I want to do it three times. And then I'm going to select all of these guys and hit Delete. Vertices, one thing that I you got to do. Um, Right now, this setting right here is called Limit Selection to Visible. Right now, it's turned on, so whenever I select something, it's only selecting what's visible, so what's, you know, at the top of the mesh, basically. So since I'm looking at the top, 
by hitting 7 on the numpad, it's only selecting these top vertices. So I turn that off, then I can select multiple ones. Okay, so back to top view, just go ahead and delete that half, and vertices, there we go. And we'll go ahead and add the, the good old mirror modifier. And uh, let's go ahead and get started modeling. Let's go to the hit three on your numpad, go to the right side of the view, and we'll select everything. We're going to scale it S on the Y axis. There we go. And kind of just. Uh, by the way, if you're not familiar, B on your on your keyboard gives you the crosshairs, and you can click and drag and select multiple vertices. Or if you're in edge mode, it'll select faces or select edges and if you're in face mode it'll select faces so on and so forth so let's kind of get the general shape of his head going here just kind of arrange it however you want you can use whatever style you want this is the style that I'm going to use so for the purposes of this tutorial you might follow along with this style but uh, later on when you're doing your own dragon you can use whatever style you want um, okay, we'll go into top view and start rounding out the back of the head and now the snout. And let's just make the head a little bit more narrow. Let's go ahead and turn on the clipping over here on the uh, mirror modifier. Start making this a little bit more narrow. Let's add a ring right here. Control R adds, adds rings. We go scale that down some, move it in. Same thing over here. Okay. And let's go to the front view. One on your numpad. And select all these corners. Nice guys. Back to front view and just kind of drag it down until it's kind of rounded out. Same thing there. And let's do the same thing on the bottom. If I do, to select this, uh, this is a uh, whole line is kind of it's a, it's a loop but it's not going around anything so I don't really want to call it a looped per se but it's kind of round that out also a little bit not too much cuz remember we're going to have a, a fairly sharp corner there on the model okay so we got the general shape down what I want to do now is I want to jump in and start on his nose on his nostrils so I select this face right there just go to face select mode and I'm going to hit E to extrude, and I'm going to scale it down, kind of move it around, scale it down some more, and I want to go ahead and extrude again, and we're going to go inside now, scale it down, go back inside some more. Okay, so we got the nostrils, let's go ahead and turn on the smooth shading, and we'll go ahead and give him a subdivision surface also. Okay. Let's uh, collapse this, and yeah, that's fine. We'll collapse. Now let's leave the mirror open so we can turn clipping on and off if we need to here in a few minutes when we start getting into some more detail stuff. Anyways, back into edit mode. Let's go ahead and give another ring right here, and let's start playing with these nostrils, getting get them flared up a little bit. Looking good. Let's make it a little wider. Bring it. Grab all these here in the middle. Don't want that guy. Okay. Drag them towards each other a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now, we've got the basic nostrils done. We'll add more details shortly. Let's go ahead and add the eye socket. So I want to put that about right here. So I want to subdivide these guys right here by putting another ring there. About like so. And let's bring this part up some. This part in a little bit. And select these two faces right here. And extrude once, scale down a little bit. Extrude again, scale down a little bit. And extrude again and start going inward. Kind of rotate it around some. And let's go ahead and delete those faces because it's going to be the eye socket and we don't need any any uh, mesh that's not going to be seen ever because the eyeball will be covering it up. And I'll go ahead and add a loop right there and a loop right there. 
so we can round out that eye socket a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so that's kind of taken shape. Let's go ahead and get the mouth area taken care of. Go into side view. And let's select these faces right here. I'm going to extrude, scale on the z-axis, so it's a little more narrow, and scale on the y-axis, so we start coming away from the edge right there. And let's kind of just scale it down a little bit more. And then extrude again, scale down. Don't want to scale too far on the y-axis. We don't want that to start coming forward. We just want it to have some thickness to the edges there. Okay, and one more time, scale it down on the x-axis. And go ahead and scale it on the y-axis a little bit as well. Move it back some. And let's go ahead and hit delete. We'll get rid of those faces. So we got a nice mouth going on here. And let's select all of these edges here. Just hold down Alt and right click. And select that loop. And we're going to hit E to extrude again. Scale on the z-axis. So we kind of have a, getting the start of a, a, a lip, basically. Come around there and scale it down some. Let's get on the Z axis some more. And let's do it one more time. Extrude, scale it down. Let me undo something real quick. Undo, and I'm going to hit scale S, but I don't want to scale it on the Z axis because I don't want it to be any more, you know, less short or whatever. So I just hit Shift Z, and it's going to scale it on every axis but the z-axis, the, the x and y. So that's what I want to do, like so. And scale it on the y-axis some more so I get some more depth there. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to start sewing that hole that's in the mouth now. I want to sew that together and, and, and fill it up. So what I want to do is select these vertices right there and this one as well. And you know what, let's go ahead and go around to the top. Select all these guys, and I'm going to extrude them and bring it all the way to the center to where it meets at the mirror, and then I'll add another face here at the top and the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. And move it all the way over till it meets. It stops, there we go. And now, I'll need to, I guess I'll need to subdivide it, so control R, put a ring on there. And now I select this for C vertex, this one, this one, this one. Hit F and it'll put a face there. F face, and same thing at the top. And there we go. So now we got a solid mouth inside there. Okay. We will mess with uh, teeth and tongues and and gums and things like that later on. For right now we're gonna just worry about the outside of the outside of the mouth, outside of the head, so... Okay, so we got our basic shape going. Um, what do we want to do now? Let's, uh, let's add a place for his horns to come out, the top of his head. Uh, you might notice my timelines here. Sometimes if I hit Alt-A by accident, it'll send... Uh, well, every time I hit Alt-A Alt -A by accident, it'll start the timeline, so just Alt-A again. We'll stop playing it. Okay, let's put a ring right here, and let's give him some horns, let's say right here. Okay, we're just going to do the same thing we've done with the nostrils and the eye socket. Just hit E to extrude, scale down, and let's bring it up some so it kind of start coming out the top of his head. And then extrude one more time, scale it down, and we'll leave that one, well, let's bring it up just a little bit. Well, we'll extrude again. This time we'll go down, scale it down some, and extrude again. This time come up, and this is going to be the start of the horns. So, go ahead and extrude out some more. Start curving them around back. Scale it down. Let's go on the top view so we can see what we're doing a little better. I don't want it to go out. I want it to kind of curve back straight. So Scale it down. Okay, so there we go. Got some decent looking horns there. Now let's uh, go ahead and give him some ears. Go into edit mode yet again. And um, I guess let's select these four faces. 
and extrude out, scale it down. But let's scale it a little more on the y-axis so it's a little more, uh, a little more thin, than it, and a little more tall and thin than it would be if it was just square. So let's make it a little taller. Hit uh, Z, and we'll go ahead and extrude out again, a little bit, and then let's extrude out again and just bring it way out and scale it down. I know what you're thinking; it's starting to look kind of like a cow or a goat or something, but that's fine. We'll we'll take care of that after a while. And let's scale this on the y-axis more, and let's go to front view. And just uh, start making it look a little more like a dragon's ear and a little less like a cow's ear. I'm from Oklahoma. We got a lot of cows around here. Oops, wrong ring. There we go. Scale on the Z. I'll select all of these here. And scale those down some. A little more narrow as well. Let's go on the Y axis. top view. Let's make this a little less thick. And let's sharpen it up some there on the tip. There we go. Okay. Looking a little messy, but we'll fix it. Let's give uh, the, the ear some indentions there. Let's go into select all these faces here on the front. And E to extrude, scale it down. Scale it down on the Y axis, or the Z axis a little more. Let's kind of rotate it on the X axis some and bring it back. And extrude one more time, scale it down, bring it up. Okay, so kind of getting a nice general ear shape. I'd like to kind of thicken this part right here up some, right there. There we go. Okay, now let's uh, let's start uh, throwing in some extra style. Don't I know what you're thinking? He's like that doesn't look anything like the other model. Well, trust me, it's it's of course it's not, but we'll get there. Don't worry. Let's uh, do some stylizing now. Let's grab, um, let's do these guys right here. And we'll extrude them up just a little bit and bring them forward just a little bit. And let's subdivide this edge right there. Hit that in there. You can see it sharpens that up quite a bit. And one thing that'll help with our visualization here is go to Subsurf and go ahead and knock the views up to two. And then we can kind of see a little bit better what it's going to look like when we're done. Uh, let's give him some thicker eyebrows. Not, not the hairy eyebrows, but the, the brow. Thicken that up, and let's go ahead and cut that again right there. And let's uh, see if we can make the inside of the mouth look a little bit better before we go any further. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw a sphere in there so we have something to look at for the eyeball put our 3d cursor somewhere close to where we think the center of the eyeball should be about right there I would think looks good shift a add a UV sphere and the automatic segments that it puts in are too many so I'll go ahead and put 16 segments 16 rings that should be fine tab and edit mode scale it down about like so and go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees while you're at it. And then tap back out. And we have our eyeball. So let's go ahead and turn on smooth shading. And let's move it forward a little bit. And let's go ahead and start modeling the eye socket to fit it a little easier, a little better. Let's 
sculpting and pulling around. You spend hours doing this kind of stuff if you got the patience. It's like a work of art. If you got the patience, you can make a masterpiece. Not saying that <laughs> I'm making a masterpiece right now, but uh, just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Okay. Still looks kind of like a cow. What can we do to remedy this? Let's make the snout a little thinner. Scale it on the x-axis and bring it in some. And let's make it a little less, make it a little less long, a little shorter. Let's grab all those, scale on the y-axis, bring it in some. There we go. Looking like a big old cow. We'll fix it though. Let's go ahead and add a little ridge on his head as well, like we done on his on his nose there. Let's grab all these faces right here, and that'll work. Extrude up some. Bring it forward some. And Control R that loop right there. There we go. Okay. Now. Let's make some extra loops around here because we're going to start getting into some more detail. Right there, right there. I'd like to make the jaw a little thicker than the top of the mouth. So I'll grab that and let's grab this and pull it back some. Scale this down a little bit. Grab those, grab those, scale those down. Let's turn on the proportional fall off so each of these are a little smoother. There we go. Tab in the top view. Grab this one. Let's make it a little more narrow. Okay. And let's let's go into sculpt sculpt mode and start to uh, Start pushing and pulling with the with the grab tool there. That'll be a little more fun, I think. Go to tool, grab. And let's make the size a little bigger. Put up to about 50 or so. And start clicking and dragging on a few different places. One thing that's really handy to help you know where you can click and drag where you can't see. Like right now, I'm clicking and dragging, but nothing's happening. Well, it's because there's really nothing there to click on. So let's turn on the wireframe view. First of all, uh, okay, do this. Go to object and scroll down to display and then hit click on wire. And we'll see our wireframe view of our model. Uh, but this is the subdiv subdivided version and that's not what we're really editing. So let's go to our subsurf settings and uh, turn on optimal display if you scroll. Uh, widen that out, you'll be able to read the whole thing. Optimal display. Check that. And now, if you tab into edit mode, you can see that this is actually kind of a smoothened version of our actual mesh. So that's what we want to work with. So now that I have, you know, my intersections, I can know where to click and drag. And it'll actually do what I'm wanting it to. Okay, so now we can start adding some de detail and some style in here. Make that nostril a little bit bigger. Start bringing it back some. And I'd like to kind of smooth this out up here. Uh, so I hit smooth and that's one one thing that I required you to download the latest copy is because uh, well later on I'll, I'll be needing it also but for right now the smooth tool uh, you might remember in some of my previous tutorials I've tried to use the smooth tool with uh, with this and I had to throw on the the multi-resolution surface uh, uh, modifier but now it, it works with the subsurf like like it used to in previous versions so sit smooth and just start smoothing away. Works a charm. So there we go. And go back to my grab tool. And start making this lower jaw a little, a little bigger. Bring the, 
corners of the mouth back a little bit further. Bring this in just a little bit. And this in just a little bit. Let's add a sub, uh, a sub, subdivision. A uh, let's go back to edit mode. Let's add a loop right here, so we can get a nice corner of the mouth set in a little bit better. Now back to sculpt mode. Grab that. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring and close his mouth. That'll be that'll make it a little it'll look a little better in our preview round out the cheeks just a little bit first. Okay. Go into edit edit mode and let's select the whole bottom jaw. Actually, let's round this out just a little bit in here inside the mouth. Okay. Now we'll select the whole bottom jaw. Like so, and just pull it up until it starts. One thing you might notice is I'm moving the bottom jaw, but the, some of the vertices on the top jaw, are, or top of the mouth, top jaw, I guess it would be, are moving also. I don't want that, so I hit O, which is our proportional fall off. O turns it on and off. But if you hit Alt O, it turns on proportional fall off, proportional editing for connected. So since this isn't connected right here, this these vertices won't affect these. So I can move it there all day long and it won't affect them. Even if I go boom right there and then move it, it still won't. So let's kind of close the mouth up. And then we can... There we go. Okay, so we're kind of seeing the dragon emerge a little bit. Um, let me turn on, go to my properties, hit N on my keypad and go down to display and let's turn off the grid floor because I kind of find it distracting when I'm modeling and turn off X and Y also. One thing I, I notice if I'm holding out alt and I accidentally click in the window somewhere it wants to grab it and, and keep hold of it. See I'm not pressing any buttons right now but my mouse is grab, is, has got a hold of it so uh, just hit <laughs> I'm not sure which button it is. Okay, just left click and it'll it'll get you out of there and you can just control Z undo it. You know, while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and save this guy. Save as and go up. I'm I've got a dragon folder here in my my normal Blender files folder, so just name it let's name it dragon underscore zero one. And we'll save as a blender file. And there we go. Okay. So let's uh let's go in and start seeing if we can't give it that nice sculpted look. And the way to do that, well, you know what, before we do that, let's get the eyebrows looking the way I want. I think we're going to need another subdivision uh, loop right there, so let's pop back into edit mode and control R, boom, right there, and we'll be able to round that out some more. There we go. Go ahead and get my grab tool, go back to sculpt mode, grab, it's already selected, and just that's not wanting to work. What's the deal here? There we go. Oh, that's weird. Hmm. Something's fishy's going on. It's not wanting to grab anything. Something wrong? Did I select something? There we go. I must have had Alt held down yet again somehow. Okay. There we go. Okay, it's kind of giving him a not quite a mean expression, but maybe maybe a stern expression. Make his eyes a little a little more menacing looking. He's not a mean dragon, but he is a stern dragon. Do not want to anger him. Okay, so let's spend hours 
tweaking the settings. Okay, it looks like he's kind of smiling. I don't want him to smile. He hasn't done anything that he needs to smile about. So let's... I want to go into edit mode. Boom. And I think the snout's a little too long yet again, so let's scale that down some. Make sure our proportional fall off is on. I guess it is. It's just not very big. There we go. Right, like so. And I want to kind of give it a nice tilt. Maybe about like that. Just a stylized. One thing that might help it out too is kind of bring this bridge of his nose up right there. It's more of a deselect, uh, deselect that guy and that guy. There we go. Let's just bring this up some so it's more of a smooth transition from his forehead to his snout. Let's get that. Okay, go ahead and save. And I guess we're far enough along now to where I can start giving those sharp corners, like I mentioned before. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the display of the wireframe there. Just go back to object and turn off wire. There we go. go ahead and save. I like to save often, as you know. And let's go into edit mode. And the way to get a sharp corner is to have two edges really near the, each other. So if I go, if I put an edge right there in between those two points, and just click, and then I can drag it down some. If I drag it closer to that bottom one, you can see it's starting to sharpen up that edge. So if I just drag it real close to it and just click, and then tab out, boom, we got a nice, a nice carved edge there. So let's do that again in a couple other places. I like to do it across the top of the nostrils there. So let's do it right there. Drag it in some. Boom. Okay. We're gonna. I'm gonna play with that a little bit more here in a few minutes after we get everything set up. And this is kind of coming out too much, I think. Let's fix that up a little bit first. Okay. Now I want to put a sharp edge across the top of his eyebrows. So let's put a another loop right there. Drag it down. And boom. Okay. Now the problem is that edge is going all the way down, and I don't want that. That's easy to fix. Just go to sculpt mode and grab the smooth tool again. And oops, I hit my Windows button on accident. And just smooth out the area that you don't want sharp. Let's make that a little stronger. Did I hit Alt again? I did. There we go. I guess I must have hit shift also. Oh, this is a mirrored side, so I shouldn't have I don't need to worry about it at all. This is something's going on here with my keyboard, I think. Maybe one of my buttons are stuck. It's like it's not smoothing, it's only smoothing a little bit as I'm dragging. This is odd. I never had these problems until I'm recording something. Maybe I need to go up here and go smooth right there. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes you just gotta play with the tools, I guess. Just gonna smooth out this whole area. Kinda flattens it back down. Let's smooth right there. And another thing you can do to get the sharp edge is if Say you already have two two edges close together. Let's go into edit mode. Let's see. Say okay, right here at the corner of the the chin, we've kind of got two vertices already, or yeah, two edges close together already. But I don't want to have to select them and try to move them. But that's that's an easy fix. Tab back into sculpt mode and just select pinch this time. And then you mouse over if it's strong enough. Let's make it a little bigger. Start mousing over. It's going to start pinching those two 
edges closer together. So see, kind of went overkill on this one because it took the top and bottom one instead of the left and right one. So let's undo that. Kind of just back and forth motion. There we go. Maybe sometimes it's easier just to just to go ahead and select it and drag it up. Dragon on the dragon. Okay. Now, I want to make him kind of have a little bit of an underbite. So, go back to edit mode. Select all of these guys here and there. And proportional editing with connected is still selected, so I just drag that forward some, rotate it around, start bringing it up. And there we go. So, let's see. I don't want this to have this rounded edge here. So another tool you can get over here in the tool shelf for the sculpt tools is called the flatten. And that's kind of what that does. Kind of just flattens things out. Sometimes a little too much. But you can play with the settings here. I want to sharpen the edge of the nostrils up just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Kind of seeing the dragon emerge. Still kind of has that cow look about it. So let's uh, see what we can do to try to get rid of that. Let's uh, turn these ears into more, more of a pointed to get the grab tools. So we can grab the whole thing. Seems like if you zoom out some, you can grab more a bigger piece of stuff. Drag those down. Drag that up. Make that a little sharper there. I guess if I made my brush a little bigger, it might be the same thing as zooming out some. Kind of triangular shape. Let's uh, go into side view. And let's bring the bottom of the ear back some and the top forward. A streamlined look. Okay, now we can see it's way too thin inside here. It's just not matching up with everything else at all. So we can do, <clears throat> excuse me, we can uh, get the inflate tool. Just run that around there, and it kind of does. Uh, well, what it says, it inflates. It. It's kind of like a bicycle tire or something like that. It's just going to make it a little fatter. That's kind of what we want on this particular occasion. Okay. All right. Give me a smooth tool again. Kind of smooth some of this up down here. Get a little messy. Okay. So that's looking good now. Go ahead and save. Control S. And just to see what it's going to look like, let's grab the eyeball and let's shift D, duplicate it, drag it over on the X axis to fill the other eye socket. About like so. And we kind of get a feel of how this is going to look with eyeballs. Okay. It's getting there. There's still a couple of things I'd like to do. For example, I would like the jaw to kind of come out more of at an angle than the than the head instead of being more or less straight up and down. So let's tab, grab the model and tab into edit mode and let's select everything here and let's put our 3D cursor right here at the top and I guess it doesn't really matter which where it is here but we'll go ahead and put it kind of in the center. One on the numpad to go to the front view and we're going to rotate around the 3D cursor which is right there so now when I rotate this going to kind of start swinging out, then I can just drag it and move it back in. Let's do a little bit more. Like so. Okay, that's starting to look a little better. 
A little less cow-like, a little more dragon-like. Go ahead and save. And let's fix those eyeballs to where they turn back, back, turn the pivot point back to the median. Let's drag the eyeballs back to their sockets. And let's drag them up some. Okay, looking good. Save. And let's go ahead and edit the eye sockets a little bit. They're they're a little bland compared to everything else now. Let's just start adding some more loops in here. The more loops you have, the more detail you can put in. Click. There we go. Let's add one right here. Okay. Now we'll go back into sculpt mode. Make sure our grab tool is selected. Start cleaning up this eye socket some to where it fits the eyeball a little bit better, yet still has a nice menacing look about it. Might even look nice if he kind of has kind of some bags under his eyes, sort of. And we can achieve a nice line through there with what? That's right, the pinch tool. Let's grab that. Let's click in there. And I'll start adding a line. Maybe it's a little too much. So, let's do this. The smooth tool, kind of clean that up a little bit again. And let's go ahead and save. And that's starting to look good. Let's uh, get the grab tool, grab that corner inside there ever so gently, bring it in until it completely touches the eye. And let's go into edit mode. Let's see what we can do to maybe get that a little bit sharper. Let's just turn off the proportional fall off. If you're in proportional editing and you hit O again, it's going to turn it completely on. Well, what I mean is if you're in the proportional fall off editing and it's on the connected setting, if you hit O again, it's going to go to the full setting. So you got to hit O one more time. Make sure your cursor is in the 3D window and it'll turn it off. So you got to hit it twice really to get it turned off once you have it turned on in the selection mode or the connection mode. Anyways. So let's kind of do a manual baggy eyes here. There we go, that's looking a little better. Let's get some back up in here as well. like to add a little more detail in here. So I'm pushing and pulling those all around. It's kind of smoothing out a little more than I like. So I'm going to add another loop right there. See what that looks like. Yeah, it's starting to look okay. You know what? Let's go into edit mode. Let's, I'm going to undo that real quick and redo it, except this time make it a little closer to that edge. So we got a nice, a nice sharp edge on it. My grab tool already selected. Kind of start playing with that until it fits the eye a little bit better and has a nice clean edge on it. Okay, now I think the eyebrows might be a little too high. So let's grab the edges of those and start bringing those down some. Maybe even, let's, let's do something real quick. Let's see if I can do it. Um, let's add like a little wrinkle right here. We could do that with the texture map, but it'll be more fun this way. Let's grab, put the, uh, put a loop right there. Control R, and let's put another loop right beside it. And then let's grab this first one that we made, and let's drag it back a little bit. And 
kind of close the gap up here right here grab all those guys move them up some okay kind of what I was going for let me see if I can't clean it up a little bit right here Okay, it's looking pretty mean, huh? Let's see, what else can we do to stylize this? I'm kind of thinking right now I want to make the eyes a little bigger compared to the rest of it. So we can either make the eye bigger or we can make everything else smaller. So I think that might be the easier option actually. So let's put our 3D cursor, go back to object mode, put our 3D cursor, go into, hit Z to go into wireframe view, put our 3D cursor yet again. <laughs> 3D cursor, 3D cursor, 3D cursor, right there in the middle of the eyeball. About like so. You know, it might even benefit us to grab that eyeball and move it up some. Yeah. Okay. So now we've got our 3D cursor right there where the eyeball is. I want to go into edit mode, select, hit A to select everything, and then let's deselect everything that's directly around the eyeball itself. Do that. Get in there. There we go. And right here. Let's deselect these guys as well. Now to deselect with what I just did, uh, you hit B to get your crosshairs. If you hold down Alt, click and drag, it'll deselect what you select. Does that make sense? It'll deselect what you moused over, what your what your box selected. There we go. There we go. Okay, so let's turn on the proportional fall off. O. Oh. And let's scale it on the or around the 3D cursor pivot point. So we'll scale it down. Boom. Like so. Alright. I'm starting to like this guy. Control save. Control S saves. And let's see, what can we do, what can we do? Let's uh, flatten out this jaw area. There's a little bit of a crease on there that I don't want. So let's go into edit mode. Let's grab that edge right there. Turn off, hit O again to turn off, proportional, fall off. Just click that and drag that forward some. And this guy. And get the old smooth tool, sculpt mode, smooth. Let's kind of just let's turn it down. Let's undo that and turn the strength down a little bit. Just gently drag it over there, and then grab the pinch tool. See if we can't sharpen that back up. Yeah, there we go. Okay, looking good, looking good. Let's put uh, some sharp edges here on the ear. Tab in edit mode. Control R, right there. Bink, and it's gonna add a sharp edge all the way around the head, so we'll see how well that works. I guess that works okay. Kinda gives some definition to the top of the snout too, as well as the bottom. And sharpens up the top of that ear. Grab the smooth tool touch in here, just clean that up ever so gently. There we go. Okay. Save this guy. And let's work on these horns. They're kind of just generic right now. Let's see if we can't make them look a little better. So let's, um, I guess we'll go into edit mode. Let's go into side view and let's grab the tip of them and bring it down. It's back towards the head a little bit. And that's looking good. Let's make it a little bigger around right here and the base of it a little bigger as well. So we'll, this time we'll go Alt S and that's going to scale it along it scale it along its normals. That it looks like I need to select some more. Let's get this next loop up. There we go. And turn on proportional editing. Alt S. There we go. Let's see how well that looks. That looks good. Nice, kind of squared off, just like we're wanting. Except, uh, it's kind of getting weird right there, so let's go in here, grab those, and move them forward. 
Gonna make this less less rounded there. Grab that and that guy. Bring him down some. Sometimes if you hit uh, Shift G, it'll bring up the select similar thing, which I never use. But sometimes I bring the menu up by accident, as you can see. So I was just telling you what that is. Okay, so squared off horns. Let's kind of fix that up in here. Grab the smooth, already grabbed. Gently come in here, clean this up. Like so. Okay, let's uh, see if we can sharpen that edge right there. Grab the pinch tool. Gently. And let's do this side as well. Okay, looking good, looking good. Go ahead and save. And let's, this kind of bugging me right here, the top of his forehead. Grab that vertex there. Turn the, ah, geez, these little pop-ups keep bugging me. Uh, back to medium point. Drag it up. Okay. Now, we've got our basic head shape done. Go ahead and save. Save, save, save. You'll keep hearing me say that. Let me, uh, let me smooth this up a little bit first. Smooth. Touch it up. There we go. Save it. Okay. So now... We will do one more thing, and then uh, I think that I'll call it call it a day on this part one. Don't worry, we're going to create this whole dragon. We're going to have as many parts as we need to get an awesome-looking dragon. So uh, before we shut down for the time being, let's start on his neck. So let's select all these at the back of his head. And these guys as well side view. Let's go ahead and scale that on the z-axis a little bit. Rotate it out some. And just go ahead and start extruding out. Rotate it around. Kind of almost an S shape, but not quite. Make sure I'm not coming out to the side too much. There we go. Let's go into top view. Nah, stay in side view. One thing that happens when I just hit extrude and I drag it out along that line, as you can see, looks fine from the side view, but if I click, you can see that it was going outward. It's going along its normal, so I don't want it to do that, so I'm going to undo and hit E to extrude, and then just go and click, and it'll clear out the line to follow along. Then you should drag it, turn off proportional fall off, proportional editing, and just drag it. You can scale it a little bit like so. Rotate it, whatever, extrude again. Oops, I followed along that edge, didn't I? So extrude, just drag. Scale it on the z-axis. So. And let's select this loop here. Actually, I want to add another loop right here so we get a little bit smoother transition on his neck here. So just add a few more loops, one more there. And let's select this guy and this guy. Turn on, proportional fall off. And let's turn it way up. Actually, let's hit Alt O so we got connected. So I don't. I noticed I was moving the horns a little bit, and I don't want to do that. Let's move it up here a little bit, and let's grab the very back of it. Move that forward some, and rotate it down. Okay got some work to do there but let's go ahead and do this let's grab all of these on the back here like so and hit delete and we'll delete them out so now when we look at it it'll be a nice clean cut rather than trying to round out round off at the end so got our basic neck here let's get our grab tool and let's go to work making it look more like a, like a neck you know what, this might have been easier in edit mode, so I'm going to undo all that. Okay. Go into edit mode. And let's select that sharp corner right there. Don't want that guy. Okay. And fall off is on. Good. And just, just 
just drag it down. So, how's that looking? That's looking pretty good, I guess. Still a little thick at the top, so let's... I don't want to do the whole thing on the top, just grab those guys and move those over, see what it looks like. There we go. And let's go ahead and smooth that neck up a little bit. Right here. Okay, now, one thing that you can, that you might notice is it looks a little flat. Well, that's because we're looking at it in the non-perspective view. If we hit five on our numpad, it'll throw it into the perspective view. You can kind of see what it's gonna look like in the 3D space. So, it's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with these results. So, let's go ahead and one thing to do real quick Smooth up the bottom of the nostrils right there. And let's grab the pinch tool and clean that up a little bit. Right there. Okay, so we got the, the pretty much the, the general look, the style down. I'll go ahead and back into flat view. So we're doing pretty well so far. We'll go into the next part and we'll maybe tweak the face a little bit more and then go on to the body and maybe the 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 f legs and feet and claws and things like that so okay well thanks for watching and i hope you're as excited as i am about this project and i will catch you in part two hello and welcome to another blender cookie tutorial this is david ward and this is going to be part two of our dragon series so let's go ahead and jump right in here um, just a quick review, we let's turn on the flat view here, there we go. Um, we got our, why well, it's kind of squirrely acting on me. Um, if you hit shift C, it'll center up everything in the scene. You can just kind of zoom in then and rotate around a little easier. Um, we got the, the basic style of our dragon down. There's a couple of quick tweaks I want to do before we really jump in and, and do any more work. I guess you could consider this to be work as well, but I'm not real happy with what the nostrils look like here. So let's let's jump in and see what we can do to fix that. Um, I kind of was thinking about trying to make it like one big nostril, kind of like you might see on a gorilla or something like that. So let's play with that option and see if we can make that look good. If not, well, we can just uh, undo a few times and uh, see what we can do. So I'm going to select everything inside the nostril area here. And let's go ahead and delete it out. Delete the faces. And let's go ahead and get all of the, all of the front. Kind of thundering outside. I hope I don't lose my power. <laughs> But uh, if we do, well, I guess you'll never know. <laughs> Anyways, delete these faces. And let's go ahead and grab this loop here and start extruding like we did before. Sort of scale down, and we'll go ahead and scale, extrude again. Scale down. Hit Alt-S just then to scale along the normals. There we go. And a little bit more, scale that down as well. Start dragging it in. Yeah, this is turning out quite okay. I'm happy with it so far. Extrude in another time. Go way back. So we got the nostrils there. And now, let's start closing that up. So let's get this guy there, make a face. And then, it's kind of hard to see what we're doing here. Okay, right there looks like another piece. 
screwed this down just a little bit. Grab that guy and then make a little face there. And let's go ahead and make a face there. Almost done. Let's uh, grab this here, extrude it down just one time. Grab these edges here and those, make a face. We don't want to put any triangles because triangles are evil. There we go. They make for bad topology when you go to animate. Okay, so it looks like I might have grabbed a couple of the wrong points. Let's zoom in here. Yes, that looks to be the case. So let's grab those faces that we made. Delete them. There we go. And if we pop into perspective view, we can zoom in a little, a little easier. See things, see what we're doing a little better. There we go. So now I grab that guy and that guy. And then way back there, those guys. Face. Alright. And we'll do the same thing on these here. Boom, almost done. These two guys and these two guys. Boom, there we go. But uh, it turned out okay, I guess. Let's kind of bring this down here. Looks like we're missing a piece. Yeah, right there needs to be hooked to something. I'm going to just go to that guy right there and can I just merge them together? I think. Let me try. Merge them at the center. Hopefully I didn't create any triangles in doing that. Don't think so. And I hit Alt A by accident. There we go. You can see the timeline going when you click Alt, when you uh, press Alt A. It says animate. But anyways. Okay, so we got the nostrils fixed up. Let's see what we can do to smooth it out to look correct now with our style that we're going for. Bring these edges out a little bit. Bring these edges, these vertices in. A little more towards the front. There we go. I think that'll work fine. So we'll go ahead and save. I'm going to save as a second version so I don't mess up my first session. So I'll go Dragon02. Save as. It's always good to keep multiple versions of something in case you mess, up, mess something up on accident. Um, looks like I missed another face. Let's go in here. Move these around so I can see. Maybe this guy and this guy? See if we merge those, see what happens. Something still missing. Undo. Sometimes uh, things can get in the way. As you can see, it's kind of hard to see what we're doing because of all the all these vertices in the background. So let's select all of those. About like so. This one too. And we hit H. It's gonna hide them. So now they're kind of out of the way, and we can see what we're doing a little better. So now we can get in here and uh, clean this up a little easier. Maybe let's hide some of these other things as well. There we go. Well, maybe hid too many things. Let's undo that. Uh, Deselect some of these, some of these points in here. Okay, now I'll see what it looks like. There we go. Now I can get in here, kind of see what's going on. I think. Let's go ahead and shift C, center that up so I can rotate around a little better. There we go. Now we can see the culprit right there. So let's merge those guys together. And now let's unhide everything. Alt H. Okay. Well, it, wow. got something going on right there. Wonder what that is. Looks like a normal's backwards. So let's select everything, and now we can uh, hit Control N, 
and you can change your normals uh, c consistent, make normals consistent make them inside or out, doesn't change anything does it? looks fine from this angle but ah I see what's going on I see what's going on, we got a face right there in the middle so let's grab the faces and delete them boom now there we go nice and clean in there alright that's the way we wanted so let's go ahead and give one more loop right here around the entrance of the nostril to make it a little sharper edged about right there yeah that'll work okay go ahead and save 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 um now we got that taken care of let's go on to the body one thing I noticed on the throat here it's just kind of indented there and I don't want that so let's grab those points and bring them forward there we go that's better okay so go ahead and save now let's go on to the body let's grab go into side view and let's grab this loop here remember hold down alt and right click and it'll select the loop and we'll go ahead and start extruding so let's extrude I want to kind of make them have like big, thick, muscly forearms and then a little bit smaller uh, rear legs. So it's kind of a nice triangular shape going on right here. So let's let's go for that. I'll give just a general body shape. Now we're going to start getting into where the tail is going to meet. So let's start planning for that. Let's extrude way out. I'm not going to have a really extremely long tail. About like that, maybe. So we get it out, and then we'll come in here and add some rings so we can add some, some extra smoothness to it when we start putting bends and things in it. Okay. So we need to close off this end of the tail, so let's do this. Grab all of these points right there. And let's get this one as well. And let's extrude them. And then just drag them towards the middle until they glue together. Let's raise this up. And this one. This one, this is where it's kind of going to get kind of tricky. Extrude that. It's gonna work. Might need to put another loop right here, and then therefore another one down here. So I did that so we can, so we can just put a face right there like so <laughs> and then we have these issues here but I think I think that can just go ahead and come all the way over yeah and then this one as well all the way over then just grab these points F makes a face F and then kinda got some Let's uh, merge those together. Merge at the last one. There we go. And then make a face there. And extrude this guy. Just drag it. I just hit E and then just grab the, uh, the little gimbal thing here. You can turn that on right here. I don't know if I showed you that before. But you can turn it on and off by clicking the little, little thing there. So I'll go to E again and then drag it on the red line. The red, the red arrow is is the x-axis, the blue arrow is the z-axis, and the green is the y-axis. As long as it's set in global view. I guess it's still the same if it's in normal view, but then it's not according to the world, it's according to the local space of the model that you're working on. Anyways, go ahead and save. Let's go to top view, and let's start tapering this down if we can. Let's put our 3D cursor right there at the very beginning of the tail and we'll select all these guys along the edge 
and turn the rotate around the 3D cursor, the pivot point, and just rotate it down, and boom. And let's go into side view, and let's kind of do the same thing with the vertical view of it. Select all these ones along the bottom, and then we'll turn on proportional fall off, proportional editing. Uh, so hit O, and it's still rotating around the, the the 3D cursor. So just rotate that up. Actually, let's select just just that bottom edge. There we go. Okay. So that's decent. One thing we can do to get this nice and round like we want is just select it and hit W, smooth. And do that a couple of times, maybe three or four times, just until it starts looking rounded like you want. Okay. So we got our tail shape basically the, the right way. Let's go ahead and put a couple of curves in it just so it looks nice here in the model. Let's go back to median point and just drag it and you, I'm scrolling my mouse wheel up and down to get the fall off to be bigger like so okay so there we go nice nice tail and it looks a little too skinny though so let's go into top view and let's thicken him up around his chest area. So we'll scale that on the x-axis and then kind of drag it out. And let's give him some hips right there. Scale that on the x-axis. Drag it out. I'd like the chest to be a lot thicker than the than the waist and, and hips. So I'll just grab that and just move it out. So we got it thicker. We also need it to be a little extrude a little bit here in the front. Just grab that and move it like so. Maybe move the where the thighs will go, move that up just a little bit. Maybe back some. Okay, that's starting to take shape. Um, let me get the grab tool in the sculpt mode. Grab. So just pull this chest out a little bit. There we go. See it's starting to go back in, kind of like the throat did before. Okay, I'll just kind of push and pull here and there until it looks, until it has a shape that we're looking for. Okay, get the smooth tool. Touch that up a little bit. Let's go up here, touch that up. Let's go ahead and that grab tool again make this throat a little smaller and up here as well okay you know what I want to make that neck a lot longer so we'll go into edit mode and let's grab the whole body we'll get about right here and then I'll just drag it down oops I'm gonna hit alt O so I get connected so I don't mess with those horns again maybe about like that and the body looks a little too long now so I'll grab that move that forward some Let's play with the tail spacing here. Okay. Now it's getting a little rough up in here. Let's go back in there and smooth that out some. Get the smooth tool. Touch it up. Like so. Okay, I think that'll work. Go ahead and save. 
And let's see what we can do. Let's go ahead and start in on the front legs, the arms, if you will. Let's go back to edit mode. And let's select, uh, let's select all of these guys right there. And let's get down into here. Okay, so this is gonna be the, I guess what you call the shoulder. So we'll extrude out. And let's turn off proportional. Hit O a couple of times if you have the connected part turned on as well. And then let's get the uh, vert vertex select tool and, and start rounding that out. Now we can go ahead and turn proportional fall off back on, so upscale it way down. I don't know, turn it off, turn it on. Make up my mind, but sometimes you need the tool, sometimes you don't. So I just gotta. Go back and forth sometimes. Okay. Okay, just kind of got that round of this add a little bit more right here. Okay. Now, I'd like to make it a little more circular. Okay, so now let's get the face tool. Select all these guys again. And let's grab the vertex select tool. Use that. Just hold down Alt and click on the edge. Clicking on there. And now I can just select all these guys in the middle. And boom, all my faces are, select, are selected. So we'll go back to face select mode. And let's go to the front view and hit two, or actually hit eight a couple times to kind of scroll that down some. And let's uh, rotate that around until it's pointing more, kind of towards, kind of towards the front and kind of down. Okay, so now let's go ahead and extrude it out some, scale it down. Okay, pull it back some. Extrude it again. Rotate it. Okay. So now we're going to come down to about where his elbow would be. So let's come down a little bit more. Rotate that. Extrude one more time. And I guess this line right here will make the crease of his elbow. So let's go ahead and make the forearm. I like to make him have like really thick forearms that are like thicker than than his upper arms. I know physically speaking that would probably not work so well, but since this is a stylized dragon, it'll work just fine. So let's go ahead and go down one more, and we'll go ahead and hit delete to delete those faces so we have a nice clean edge there. We'll work on the claws later on. Let's get these front arms looking nice. So what I want to happen is I want them to be facing kind of like like a dog or any other type of four-legged animal. The front legs are kind of shaped like a backwards C and then the back legs are kind of shaped like a normal C. So we'll get these front legs with the elbow bending inwards so let's grab our vertex select tool and click on that ring there. And we'll drag those back like so. Okay. And then I want to make them a little smaller, so I'm going to scale it down just a little bit. And I'm going to go into uh, sculpt mode. So I can get my grab tool and I can rearrange these a little bit better. Side view. Let's make this sh shoulder a little thicker in here. And have the uh, I guess the deltoid area come up some more. 
smooth this wrinkle out that we've got going on here. Smooth that right there. It looks like we might have some bad topology lying under there, so let's go into edit mode. That's yeah, not so bad. Maybe just add a couple more loops here and there. Let's add one here. And let's add one here. So that should be a little bit better. Smooth that out. Okay, now we get the grab tool. See if we can square this up some. Let's go way out and grab that. There we go. Bring his belly up now. A lot of times you just got to sit there and play with it, pushing and pulling and sculpting and doing all kinds of stuff to get it to look the way you want. As you can see, it's not a quick process, even if you know exactly what you're wanting, because you can always change your mind along the way. Okay, I'm liking those arms, but I don't really think they're fitting with the rest of the body. So let's let's go in and let's make them a little bit smaller. Let's select all those. Grab in here, and then and let's put the 3D cursor up here about. Actually, I need that one too. Okay, put the 3D cursor about where the shoulder joint would be, so probably about right there. I'm side view, the same thing, and we're gonna. Pivot point around the 3D cursor, and let's just start scaling it down. Yeah, that's looking a little better. Bring it in some. Okay. I'd like to add a couple of loops in here on the arm so we can get it a little more detail onto it. And let's see if we can't start adding that squared that squared style to it. We've already got a little bit on there. Actually, let's try that pinch tool. So let's go to sculpt mode. Pinch. Start pinching along in here. Huh. There we go. A little bit more on this side. Okay, and back here as well. Maybe in here. Okay. I'm liking the shoulders now for the most part. But I don't think that they match the neck. So what I want to do now is go in here. It looks like the neck might need in a couple more loops in it. So do that. Out. Put one there and there. And let's make it more of an S shape than more the neck. So let's grab the whole body and let's make sure our median point is selected. And just start moving it forward, and we'll increase our fall off as we go about like that that's a little bit better I think let's go in and clean some of this back up grab our smooth tool grab bring that down make sure your 
you're selecting in the right spot. Maybe go ahead and smooth that part up, I guess. Okay, this is looking better, I think. However, I don't know about you guys, but to me the head looks a little too small for the rest of the body. So, instead of messing with the head, let's make the body a little smaller. Let's go to edit mode. Select everything except for the head. That whole loop, that loop, that one, and that one. And let's put our 3D cursor right there at the very top of the neck center it up there we go and we're going to scale along the 3d cursor scale down and turn the fall off down a little bit okay yeah there that's a little better a lot better okay so go ahead and save and i must have hit all day again i keep doing that all day there we go so we got the body and the front arms. Let's go ahead and work on the back arms, back legs. Of course, in this position, he's going to be kind of sitting down. We don't really want him to sit down while we're sculpting him. I mean, we can animate later, have, have him sitting down. So I guess what we need to do is bring up the back of the body. Oops. This loop right there. There we go. Let's put our 3D cursor right here so we can just rotate up and then just drag it that tail put it back sometimes you just gotta click around like I have it right there say I wanted to put it over here instead if I click well obviously it worked that time but if you're too close to one of these axes you, of course it doesn't want to work when I'm trying to show you but uh, Okay, if you're inside that circle, say I wanted to move it a little bit to the right, I couldn't do it because it's it's still within its bounds. So I just click way over somewhere just to get it out of the way, and then I can click precisely where I want. So let's move that tail back down. Let's go ahead and give it a few more loops in here too. Okay. Smooth the knees up. How's that looking? I think it's doing pretty well. Okay. Go ahead and save. And let's start on these rear legs. Go to edit mode, and let's grab these guys. Oops, go to face select. Grab these guys right there, not that one. Okay, and let's extrude here. Turn that off of 3D cursor. Put it back on median point, and let's turn off proportional fall off. Turn that down. Scale it down, and then turn back on proportional. Fall off proportional editing. I keep calling it proportional fall off, but its true name is proportional editing. So let's get this rounded out kind of like we did on the front legs. Oh, it's thundering outside been drizzling all day here so have this up here okay so let's get these this rear leg done so let's just select all these guys okay extrude out it around. Let's turn off the fall off again. 
O on your keypad, keyboard. Scale that down, extrude again, rotate it, relocate it. And let's go one more here. Scale it way down. And like I said, the front arms kind of come back towards the body. And so we're going to do the same thing with the back legs. They're going to go in towards the body. So let's move those forward a little bit and then extrude down some. This is going to be his knees. One more. Rotate that down. And we'll go ahead and delete those faces as well. Okay, so we got our back legs now. Let's see what we can do to make them look a little closer to the rest of the style, like the front legs. So we'll go to sculpt mode, get our grab tool, just start pushing and pulling until it looks the way we want. You know what, I think I'll go into edit mode to get the angle down. That whole loop there, that whole loop. And let's put the 3D cursor at the, where the hip would rotate. Go side view, there we go. Control one will go to the back view. One goes to front view. Three goes to the left side view. Seven goes to the top. If you hold down control and hit one, that goes to the rear view. 3 goes to the, the right view, and 7 goes to the bottom. So you hold down control, it does the opposite. So anyways, we want to go to the side view. Actually, we want to go to the rear view. So control 1. There we go. And make sure we're rotating around the 3D cursor yet again. Rotate that down. Actually, let's turn on the proportional editing. Rotate it around. Get that up a little bit more. And there we go. Okay, so we're back in sculpt mode. Let's go ahead and make that look a little bit nicer. I don't want to undo that one. Some nice muscular legs going on here. Get my smooth tool, there's some weirdness going on up in here. Smooth that out. There we go. Get the grab tool again. Let's make those a little thicker. Okay, so we've got the basic shape down. Let's go ahead and apply the sharper corners to it. Let's go into edit mode, see where we're the best place to put those. Maybe one right here, and then maybe let's put a loop right here. There we go. Okay, so let's kind of see it kind of put a little bit on the front leg, so let's kind of smooth that up some. Grab the pinch tool again. Let's get that crease right back there if I can. Uh, got it a little too much in some spots. So we'll touch that up a little bit. There we go. And get the pinch tool. Grab. I think there was one back here, wasn't there? Yes. So get the pinch tool and just there it is. Smooth. Smoothing that up a little bit. Okay. So now we got the dragon. His body and his legs and arms, or all legs if you want to consider it like that. 
Um, let's go in here and get the backs of the knees a little more to the front. Okay, I think that'll work. Quick little touch up there. Okay, now, one thing that I did not do yet was, is I didn't create the inside of the mouth. few touch-ups here real quick like and then we'll jump into the, the inside of the mouth okay go ahead and save and now let's go to edit mode or object mode and then we'll tab into edit mode and let's do like we did before Let's we'll select almost everything except the main face itself and we'll hide it. And then let's select one of these points and hit Shift C. So we center in the scene. Then we can, well, I guess it's wanting to center around the whole model there. Let me put our 3D cursor there. Shift C. There we go. Okay, so let's uh, let's figure out how we're going to do the inside of the mouth here. Um, let's go ahead and hide some more vertices. Let's get the face select tool actually and just see what we can do to hide the whole top of the head there. And let's go ahead and do the bottom as well. So what I'm going for is I just want to see what's going to make up the inside of the mouth. So if you zoom, zoom in here, you can see that we have some of that selected, which I don't want because I want to leave it unselected. So when I hide everything else, it's left behind. And I can see a problem right there. So I merged a couple of vertices earlier when we were messing with the nose. So, I guess we'll unselect these guys. And go ahead and hit H now. And we can hide everything except the inside of the mouth. Let's see if I can't fix this really quick right here. Um, I guess the best thing to do would be just select the edge right here and the edge right, those two edges right there. Delete the edges. And I guess these two as well. Now, select this edge and this, or this vert vertex and this vertex, and hit F to make a face. And then I will W subdivide. And I'll put a vertex right there in the middle. And then I can go ahead and recreate those faces that were messed up. Looks like this one might have been. Oh, okay. I guess it's attached to the right there. Turn off proportional fall off. There we go. Yep, that one. There, there, and there. Face. Do, 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 face. Okay. So now let's go ahead and grab all these guys here and we'll go ahead and hide those as well. Hide. And don't worry, they're still there. If you tab out of edit mode, you can still see the whole model. Tab back in, they're still hidden. So the inside of the mouth is going to be all of these guys right here on the opposite side from what we can see. So let's mess with the bottom first. So let's select everything along the top. If we hide these right here, deselect everything first. Hide these right here. Is it what I want to do? Yeah. Hide those. 
then we can select one vertex there on the top and since all the other vertices and, and faces and everything else are hidden it's kind of separated this top of the mouth from the bottom of the mouth so if I select one point on the top piece I can hit control L well spoke too soon I guess um, okay I need to select these guys as well hide those and then select one on the top control L and it just selects everything else on the top so I'll go ahead and hide that and now I can see the bottom of the inside of the mouth so that's what we want to edit let's go ahead and get our face tool go to top view and let's get all of these guys about down to there and let's go ahead and grab this whole loop. There we go. And we're going to extrude it down and kind of scale it down as well. It's going to be the concave inside of the bottom of the mouth. So let's make some gums for him to have teeth. So let's get this loop here and we'll go ahead and get this loop here. But I don't want those guys back there. Extrude that back up. Actually, you know what? Let's grab this loop and this loop and then get rid of those guys. Be right there by his gums, and that's what we want. Or by his lips. So there we go. So now we've got gums coming up. So when we open his mouth, we'll see the gums, and, and we'll go ahead and add some teeth here shortly. Kind of running out of time here. So let's go ahead and do the gums on the roof of the mouth also. So we'll tab out, actually don't tab out, just hit Alt H and it's going to unhide everything. So let's hit B and then hold down Alt and we'll just deselect everything right here on the face again and hit hide and that'll save us a few steps there. And now I want to do the top of the mouth. So let's select one face here. Control L and select the whole bottom again and hide. And I don't really need to do anything else up here because I can see everything I need. So let's get all of these faces here on the top. Actually, it may not be a bad idea because it will keep me from selecting the wrong thing. So let's get all these guys here. And we'll go ahead and hide those as well. There we go. So now, remember 7 gives you the top view, control control 7 gives you bottom view, and that's what we want. Bottom view looking up at the top of the roof of the mouth. So let's get all these guys here, and this one, and we'll go ahead and extrude up a little bit, and then grab this guy, and I think that's the only one I'll grab on the top of the mouth, and extrude that up, and this will be the gums on the roof of the mouth. Drag these towards each other there. Okay. Now, if we tab out and go into wireframe view, we can kind of look in and see that the gums are pretty well lined up. Maybe the the bottom gums come a little further than the top ones if you can kind of see what I'm trying to show you here. Just keep an eye right there for the bottom gums as we rotate around. And the top gums come up here. And that's just fine because, as you can see, he kind of has an underbite. So his bottom teeth are going to jut out a little, a little further to the front than his top teeth. So, really quick, let's go in and, and make some teeth. And they're just going to be kind of generic teeth. Uh, no molars or anything with weird shapes. So, tab into edit mode and actually let's just do this on the side let's go shift s shift a actually mesh cube and then go to front view and we'll go into edit mode scale it down and then subdivide um, let's just do two scale it down we want to kind of give it a triangular shape scale it up a little bit and then grab that very bottom Rotate around the median point, scale that down, and then scale these guys down. And I want to kind of make it like a curved shape, so let's 
move that a little bit that way. Yeah. Let's go to the side view. Grab these. Just these. Move them down. Let's make it a little bit more narrow. Scale it on the x-axis. There we go. Let's go in the top view and kind of give it a nice rounded shape just a little bit. Kind of see what our teeth are going to look like. Let's add a subdivision surface and then set the shading to smooth. And that's looking kind of like I want, but we need to give it that sharp edge style. So go ahead and put a loop right there by that corner and one right there by that corner. And it's looking a little bit better. Kind of like it to come to a very, very sharp tip, though. So let's get these guys, scale them on the x -ax uh, y axis, I guess. Let's scale them down some. Make it a little, a little sharper there. That's kind of good. It tapers down a little too too much though, so I'm going to bring that up. Let's go into front view. Hmm. Skillet on the z-axis. That's a little bit closer to like I want. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be our teeth, and we're going to need to attach it to this model. So the way to attach two different meshes into one to combine them is to have the first one selected that you want to attach to the second one and hold down shift and then select the second one and then hit uh, control J and it joins it to the mesh so now we'll go to edit mode you can see that it's now part of the mesh so let's scale it way down and we're gonna start implanting it there in the gums of the roof of the mouth need to make it quite a bit smaller. We'll just leave them straight for now. We might go to add some uh, some random twirls and whatnot later on. A little bit smaller. And just hit Shift D and just drag it forward. Shift D. Shift D. Oops. Hold on, caps lock instead of shift when I tried to drag it. Shift D. Almost done. Top view. And that might, let's go ahead and delete that last one. Let's delete all the faces. Select one point on, on that tooth there. Control L. Selects all of them. Let's rotate it around. Let's drag it up to where it's fitting in the right spot. As you can see the curve of the gums, kind of a horseshoe shape. Very squared horseshoe shape, but this is a kind of a squared stylized model, so that's fine. Okay. And starting to take shape there. Grab this guy. Put him right there in this guy. Kind of make him fit the curve. Okay, tap back in edit mode and kind of get a preview of it right here. So let's kind of make it fit the gums. Let's grab, I guess it would be this one here, control L, and let's scale it down a little bit and move it back some. This guy, control L, let's rotate him, let's scale him down, move him back. This guy needs to come back. And the very first tooth that we put in needs to be rotated a little bit different and needs to come back as well. And then that corner tooth. And that little guy come forward some. Okay. So 
that's decent looking I like that so now we need to copy those to the bottom of the mouth so let's uh, let's go ahead and just duplicate this one that we have selected shift D just drag it down and then we'll unhide everything alt H again and then kinda do like we did before uh, hold down uh, hit B hold down alt and deselect everything here like so and then hit H hide all that back and now select the some point on the top of the mouth control L and we'll hide that we'll also need to you know what let's leave these teeth here so we can kinda arrange the bottom teeth to go around them so they don't collide when he's opening and closing his mouth so I think I had that point on this tooth selected so let's go ahead and select those and I'll just go ahead and delete that and remember we'll have a point here hanging out in space that we'll need to come back in later and delete also uh, so now we can just select one of these teeth up here control L and shift D and now we're gonna scale it hit S negative one time on the Z axis so it's the same thing as mirroring it now we can kinda arrange it to fit on the gums the way we want to. Let me come up a little bit more. Okay, you can see it, kind of a preview of what it's going to look like there. So let's go into top view now, 7, and let's just start, start duplicating the teeth there on the bottom. One more. Boom. Now let's select all these, a point on all of them, and hit Control L. And we will need to rotate them like so. Maybe drag them forward a little bit. Maybe down a little bit more. There we go. And let's let's start giving some variety to the teeth. They're all the same now. Let's let's toss it up. Let's grab this tooth here, Control L, and just kind of rotate it a little bit, give him a little bit of a snaggle tooth there. And get this one on the corner, not that one, this one here, and let's scale it up quite a bit so we'll have like some bottom fangs coming out. Rotate it a little bit. There we go. And then say this guy. A little smaller. That looks pretty good, I think. And let's kind of do the same thing with those teeth that are going to be on the top. Kind of just control L, kind of just rotate it a little bit differently. And let's give these corner corner teeth get make them a little bit bigger like fangs as well. Okay. Rotate it some, move it in. Okay, so now, later on, I hit Alt-A again, um, when we start animating, we will open his mouth, and you'll be able to attach the teeth, the top teeth to the top of the mouth, and bottom teeth to the bottom. Um, while we're in here, I guess we should go ahead and make the tongue. So let's grab these two guys right here, and let's extrude it forward some bit more and we'll go ahead and scale it down. You can have a very wadded up tongue if it's gonna you can have a long tongue. Hmm, you know what? Let's undo a couple of things. And I want to unhide all the rest of it. Let's make the tongue start way back at the back. So let's deselect a lot of the rest of the mouth here. Go ahead and hide everything again. And now Let's grab just those top guys right there and say this is one on the side here. And let's hide those. Let's grab this and move it up and then back. Don't worry, all the hidden vertices are following along with it. Let's rotate it down. Let's start the tongue out way back at the back. Just move that down some. So we'll get the tongue started right there instead of way up here. 
go and extrude, extrude. Let's rotate it. Let's go ahead and drag that all the way forward. Not like so. And let's get the vertices inside here and move them up. And I want to angle that back because I want to give him a forked tongue and and uh, have this extrude out some. Let's go ahead and add some loops in here. Just want it to be really flexible because it probably will add some stretch to it when we go to rig. Just round that out. Grab these ones along the bottom. Make sure you're grabbing the right ones. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So now let's grab the face tool. Grab these two guys. And now if we were to extrude, it would still glue it together, like so as you can see. So I want to undo that extrusion. And let's turn off the clipping over here on the add uh, on the mirror modifier. So now we extrude. There we go. Kind of get a forked tongue thing coming out. A little bit more. And one more. Okay. So now let's uh let's hide a couple of things. The base of the tongue. So I can use it as a separate piece. Hide. So now I can select all that. Boom. And let's put our 3D cursor, go to top view, put our 3D cursor right there. And pivot point around the 3D cursor and we'll scale it down. Oops, let's make sure it's lined up in this view as well. Okay, now, scale it, there we go. I'd like to, let's turn on the clipping again. I'd like to rotate it towards a little bit more triangular shaped. There we go. And scale it on the y-axis some more. Let's kind of give it a... Go back to median point. Give it a, kind of a roll. So it's folded up in his mouth. Let's roll it some. There we go. Okay. Well, um... One more thing, grab the tongue, and let's bring it down to the bottom of the mouth. Rotate on the x-axis some, so it's... And make it a little wider even. Actually, let's drag it out that way. There we go. Okay, so now we got the hidden inside of the mouth that we won't be able to see when we come out of edit mode, like so. But it's there. I'll remember these two points here that I need to get rid of that were the tips of the teeth that I deleted. There we go. So now we got the whole inside of the mouth done, as you can see. So when we go to animate, we won't have to like, oh, we forgot to do the inside of the mouth. If you're going to have an open mouth, you've got to do the inside of it. Okay. So go back to solid view. And now we have our dragon pretty good to go. We just need to make his hands and feet. And uh, we will cover that in part three. So, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too much at some points. But um, that is all for part two, and I will see you in part three. Go ahead and save this, and I will go ahead and see you next time.